Red Hat OpenShift is a container orchestration platform which is built on top of Kubernetes. Red Hat OpenShift uses OC or OpenShift CLI to manage the Kubernetes cluster from the command line. OpenShift adds a lot of new functionality to Kubernetes like improved security, easier application deployment, integrated building functionality, and image registry, and much more. Besides this functionality, it also adds some commands that make the usage of OpenShift way more efficient and easier for users. In this video, I'm going to show you a few commands from OpenShift OC, which are quite useful, and I have found them much easier than the kubectl syntax. The first command of that category is OC extract command. Normally, I find it quite cumbersome to work with config map in Kubernetes with the help of kubectl. It really bit the syntax is very cryptic, but OC extract makes it quite easier. For example, if you look at this command, OC extract, this command here is being used to get or extract the data or key value from test CM configuration map. So all you need to do is to do OC extract, then the name of your config map, and then two specifies that where to save that data after you extract it from the config map so i'll be putting or storing the data in data.txt file and what i want to extract i want to extract the value of this key test key from the config map so in comparison if you want to use kubectl you would need to use a kubectl get command with the config map name and then some json path syntax to extract the data and then you will redirect the output to the data.txt or whatever file you want to so uh, i find that working with json path is still a bit cumbersome and in comparison oc extract seems way easier okay now let's look at the next command which is oc set data oc set data is used to update keys in the config map if you look at this command we are doing OC set data, then we are mentioning the name of the config map, then the name of the key which we want to update, and then we are extracting the new value from a file. And we from that file we have specified the new value in the key too. So what OC set data will do, it will go into this file, it will extract the value of key two, and then it will assign that value. To this well to this key which we are specifying here in the config map which will be stored in this dollar config uh, config map underscore name so it makes it very easy okay now let's look at another example where we are adding and removing a volume with the OC set volumes command on the in the command on your screen OC set volumes we are adding a volume into a pod if you think about it, when you want to define volumes for pod, you are required to add data to the volume and volume mount section of the pod specification. So you need to go into, for example, uh, if you're doing it with kubectl, you need to go to that file by maybe kubectl edit, or maybe you change the YAML file, and then you apply the kubes, uh, that file again with kubectl. Now, instead of doing it, if you are using OpenShift, you can do this directly with OC CLI. And for that, all you need to do is to go and say OC set volume. You need to give your existing pod name and then you say add, then give the new volume name. And it is a uh, PVC, which is a persistent volume claim. And then you mention the claim size, which is a two gigabit, and then claim mode, which is a retrite only, and then the mount path as where this will be mounted in the pod so this is all you need to do you don't need to open any file you don't need to apply any file you can directly mention a pod name and the specification of your pvc and that it will become the part of that pod it's that easy 
Similarly, if you want to remove um, a pod, then you need to <clears throat> just use the remove flag. That's it. Just like this. Uh, all I'm doing here is I'm mentioning the remove a flag and then the volume name it will be removed from here okay that's good now normally when you're troubleshooting something in your kubernetes uh, deployment or in your overall cluster if you are using kubectl you can definitely check the logs of the pod um by which is basically the pod uh, the logs of the container which is running inside the pod if you want to look at the logs of the host operating system which is running that pod or container you need to ssh to that node and then uh, look at various logs for example the system d logs or whatever component you are interested in normally it it, it becomes quite a hazard security wise and it's not really recommended to log into that node directly which is running your deployment but if you have to troubleshoot it then there is no other choice unless you come up with some really esoteric and weird uh, way or you use some third party tooling or something like that which is again really compromises the security now with the help of OCCLI instead of logging into the node you can use this OC ADM node logs command to pull out the logs of that node so all you need to do is to just give this oc adm command and then node logs and node name and it will give you the node logs if you want to restrict it to a specific systemd unit then uh, you just need to specify here with the dash u flag for example here i'm just um, getting the logs of cryo container runtime or the kubelet right okay Another cumbersome task in Kubernetes cluster is um, to switch to a new namespace. Creating a namespace is very easy with, with kubectl, but if you want to switch to or change to a different namespace, then it is a bit, um, I would say, complex and cumbersome um, unless you are using the kubectx plugin. But I'm not a big fan of installing plugins. Um, because I want to keep my Kubernetes cluster as light as possible because when you update it later, then you also have to, have to take care of those plugins update and all that stuff. So uh, already the Kubernetes cluster is very complex, so no need to add more complexity. In this case, if you uh, if we you, if you're using Red Hat OpenShift, then you can see that OC CLI makes it very easy. In Red Hat OpenShift, the namespace is called as project so if you want to switch to a new namespace or project in this matter all you need to do is to give this command oc project and your project name or in other words namespace name so i hope that you like the easiness and um, very swift nature of this openshift cli if you're looking to justify your openshift um, spend then i think oc cli is one of the cornerstone of this good product also um, there is also something called as rosa or red hat openshift on aws if you're running aws cloud and you want to run your red hat openshift on aws you can just play around with the rosa instead of aws's own eks that is another container orchestration platform you can use okay if you have any uh, questions or feedback for this video or in um, for open head open shift red hat please put it in the comment section thank you